Okay. Perfect for the not so perfect family. So as we think about how do I practice faith with my family, I want to emphasize that idea, the not so perfect family. Uh, one of the things about that commercial that just always gets to me because um, it seems as if the dad is saying, okay, now here's some things you don't talk about. Here's the things we're not going to say. And as we talk about um, improving our faith or practicing our faith at home, I want us to look at um, two passages of scripture. Next slide for me, please, Chad. The two passages of scripture is, and they, the title, the subtitle is Don't Mention It. Okay, remember that, Angie. Don't mention it. Next slide, Chad, please. So the two scriptures I want us to look at is the first one is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 3 to 9. It's a familiar passage of scripture. The children of Israel are on their way into the promised land. And God tells Moses, tell these people this. Tell them this. Here's what I want you to know. Therefore, hear, O Israel, and and hear, O Israel, and my eyes are going. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you. And that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. This is the commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Next slide, please. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. And on that word heart, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So the first thing that we need to understand then as we practice faith within our families is number one, that it has to be first in my heart. You got to have that relationship with God ourselves. I can't take you any place and I'm not going myself. I can't teach you to love God if I don't love him myself. You've got to have it, first of all, in your heart. Okay. Not, not, not a hearsay thing, not just what my mama taught me, but something that you know, a personal relationship with God. It's got to be personal. It's got to be personal. Now, the second thing you got to understand is, is as we talk about um, how do we demonstrate this in our families or how do we practice faith in our families, I want to offer just three quick options, okay? First of all, it starts in your heart. Then secondly, is you got to teach it diligently. That's what the Bible says. Teach it diligently. You know, intentional, unintentional, teach it diligently. And the first part of teaching it diligently Teaching it diligently is what I call unconsciously learning, unconsciously teaching. It, it's where, like in the car, the kid says, wait a minute, that so-and-so has a tattoo? Dad has a weakness for redheads? You know, all those kind of crazy things, right? That's teaching unconsciously or teaching where kids watch it. They see what you do. They hear what you do. We oftentimes hear people say, preacher, you got to practice what you preach, right? Because the key is that children are learning. And whether we don't want them to mention it or not, they see what we do. And so when I talk about this unconsciously teaching it, it really relates to my daily living. How am I practicing Christianity? How am I practicing what I learned about the Bible? How is it showing up in the way I treat the lady at the Walmart line, in the way I treat my neighbor, in the way I treat my friends, in the way I treat the folks who call on the phone, okay? That's the kind of diligent teaching that kids are going to pick up on. I saw this writing that said this, children don't want to read your lips. They'd rather read your heart. Children don't read our lips. They read our heart. And so part of demonstrating or how to practice faith within my family is I've got to live it and it's going to be unconscious. I'm going to watch it. And then there is, of course, the informal teaching. Okay. The informal teaching. That's, that's where the Bible says here that you write it on the doorpost. You write it on the doors. You write it everywhere you go. My mom had this crazy habit 
of writing commandments everywhere you went. In every room, there was a commandment. In every room, there was this, don't do this, don't do that. You know, and I thought everybody had them. But the Bible says that they taught the children of Israel to write it even on their sleeves, write it in their on their collars so that everywhere you go, they had a chance to hear the biblical teachings. Now, how do kids learn the Bible? They learn it by watching us demonstrate the Bible. They learn it by watching us. They learn it by every chance you get, you teach the biblical in instruction. Every chance you get, every opportunity, just like you talk about baseball or the weather, or you talk about what happened in the news, every opportunity you get, you try to make it a biblical piece of instruction. Make sense? Talk to me on the chat, okay? That So every chance you get, every opportunity you get. Now watch. You don't beat kids over the head with the Bible because that's not how we learn the Bible. We learn the Bible by watching mom. We learn that we are to give to the poor because we watch mom give to the poor. We watch the sacrifices that parents make. So that's how you learn the scriptures by helping them to grow into the scriptures. Okay. And so I call that informal learning. You write it everywhere they go. Every chance you get, you pour it into them. I remember one time, I was riding with my son and um, we were driving in the car and I saw somebody do something. I can't remember what it was, but I saw him do something. And I looked over at my son, this was Walter. And I said, Walter, and I went, blah, blah, blah. You see that? And then Walter looked at me and says, daddy, we got it. Daddy, we got it. We get it. Okay. <laughs> but as, as you know, the person that I am, every chance I get, I, I want to pound it in. I want to pound it in. I want to pound it in. And so you don't pound the Bible in, okay? You live it. You live the biblical preaching, the biblical teachings. That's how you do it. That's informal, okay? And then you cannot neglect the formal education. <laughs> I know you probably don't want to hear this, Jermaine, but you got to take your kids to church. It's just a rule. I mean, it's just a rule. I mean, I didn't make up the rule. It's just a rule. You got to take them to church. You got to take them, don't neglect the assembly of the saints. You've got to get some formal education, get the preachers and the teachers and the church mothers and all that to, to also teach that illustration. It's got to be modeled. Okay. So in order to, to really practice faith within my family, um, I can't go back to that commercial. Um, let me show you one other scripture. Go to the next slide for me, please, Chad. <laughs> Someone said they can't hear me. Can you hear me now, Cynthia? Can you hear me now, Cynthia? Testing one. Can you hear me now, Cynthia? Testing one. All right, Jermaine, you can still hear me, correct? Angela, can you hear me? All right. And let's see. Chad? All right. All right. Okay. Can you hear me now, um, Cynthia? Yeah. All right. Cynthia's having some technical difficulties. All right. I hope you can get it straight, Sam. All right. Oh. So the, the next slide, though, it showed uh, an illustration of. Um, um, I, I can't. I can't hear you, Mr. Um, Barnett. Yeah. Sir. Thank you. Can Thank you. you very much. Yes, sir. Just chat. Is that Chad or that Cynthia? Who's that Cynthia? This is Chad. This is Chad Sellers. Okay. How about Cynthia? Cynthia says she can't hear me. Cynthia Smith. Um, she, it could be a speaker thing. Could be some technical okay. difficulties. All right. Um, Thanks, I, I think everyone else is when, is inside of the the All room. Right. There, they should be able okay. to hear. Okay. Let's go back then. Slide to that last slide, Chad. The one that um is Proverbs chapter twenty two verse six. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. As a matter of fact, when you get a chance, guys, go home and read that whole passage but it tells us this train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he'll not depart from it i think the thing that i would want to emphasize the most to parents is that you've got to trust what you put in them that's that's hard that's hard because we see the world pulling them and and tugging at them and 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 all the other persuasions from the world but you've got to trust what you've put in them You've got to trust that the word will do what the word has promised it's going to do. 
that even though they may go astray, they'll not depart from it. You've got to trust what you have put in them. And the beautiful part is that when, when you see them come full circle, when you see them line up with the will of God in their lives, when I do a thing now with my kids, because they're all adulting now, and I'll, I'll just stop and say, okay, you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and 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 they all know how to pray. They know how to talk to the Lord. And I mean, that's just, whew, that's icing on the cake, that they're making godly decisions simply because you trust what God has put in them. You trust what you've done. You trust that, that what you've done, how you've modeled it, how you've modeled it unconsciously, how you've modeled the Christian life, how you've modeled biblical preaching, biblical teaching, you know, how you've practiced those things, how you've modeled those things. It, it is phenomenal because it, it works. I'm telling you, it works. I'm a witness that it does work. So I want to share a couple thoughts with you. Number one, this person put on Facebook the other day. She says, I'm tired of people who have a mouth full of scripture and a heart full of hate. <laughs> I'm tired of people who have a mouth full of scripture, but a heart full of hate. You see, I said earlier that children don't read our lips. They read our hearts. They read your emotions, your mannerisms, your uh, what you do with people, how you treat people, they they read that, okay? Another illustration was um, a little girl had gotten saved and the little preacher was talking to the brother of the little girl and said, wow, we can't wait till you give your life to the Lord and, and, and you surrender to the Lord and you'll be saved. And then the little boy said, yeah. He, the teacher, preacher said, because we want you to be like your, like your sister. And then the little boy said, yeah, but preacher, you don't know. Um, Everybody in the house doesn't like my sister now, <laughs> you know? So again, it's how you live your life. It's how you live. And God requires and God demands that we love him with all our heart. We love our neighbors and we do unto others as he would have them do unto us. And he, loves, he wants us to practice faith with our family. How? By demonstrating it, by living it that way. The last one I'll share with you is this. Someone said this the other day, and they said, um, I'm not that interested in them putting Christ back into the schools or even Christ back into Christmas. I'm more concerned about putting Christ back into Christians. You get it? I'm not that concerned about putting Christ back into the schools. I'm not that bothered about them taking Christ out of Christmas and making it all commercial and stuff. What keeps me up at night is we're not putting Christ back into Christians. You've got to model it. So how do I practice faith with my family? Chad, if you do me a favor, can you go back and show us that video one more time? Yes, sir. I can. One second. Thank you, sir. And as Chad is going back to um, look at the video, we're going to do some, I hope we can open up the line so we can do some conversations. We can talk and I'll answer some questions for you. Huh? And remember, what are we not going to mention to grandma? That grandpa loves redheads. That Lizzie got a lower back tattoo. That you have trust issues. <laughs> The 2022 Toyota Highlander. Perfect for the not-so-perfect family. You know, when I see that commercial, I laugh. But then when I hear the commercial, I cry. Because there are things in our lives that um, we don't want mentioned. You don't mention it. One of the questions I was going to ask you today is, what conversation would you not want to have with your children? You've got an eight-year-old, a 20-year-old, a 15-year-old, a teenager. What conversation is it that we would not want to have with that eight-year-old or that 20-year-old? And I, I keep, I've always learned that um, children learn what they live. Okay, don't let anybody fool you. You know, don't let anybody trick you and think that they're going to get it from some other place. They learn 
what they live. They treat the mailman the way you treat the mailman. They'll treat the garbage man the way you treat the garbage man. They'll treat the neighbor the way you treat the neighbor. They'll kick the dog if you kick the dog. So children learn what they live. Christianity is not taught, it's caught. It's like a cold, it's like a flu. You hang around it and you get it. That's all, it, it's caught, it's caught, man. It's caught and our job as parents is to model it mm. the best we can, to model it in our words, in our actions, Man, the thing that bothers me most with children is that they watch everything. And, you know, even when they're small, it doesn't take them long to figure out how to do it. I was talking to a parent just the other day, and her son is less than a year old, and he knows how to say the word sugar, honey, iced tea. Okay? Yeah. Less than one. And she said when he said it, she first laughed, and then she didn't laugh. Because he knew when to use it. He knew how to use it. How did he get that? Did he find it in a book? No. Because he heard it. He lived it. And so we've learned through life that a garden that's not cultivated, a garden that's not weak, not, not developed, a garden that does that just lays dormant, it will gather weeds. It will gather weeds. Trust me. It will gather weeds. And so someone asked the question, they said, well, so if I don't teach Christian principles, will the devil just lay back and not teach my kid devil principles? Obviously not. If you don't teach Christian principles, the devil is definitely going to teach his principles to our children. All right. So um, let's talk. Let's ask, it's going to answer some questions and, and let's just let's just dialogue for a moment. Um, Chad, is there a way? That uh, the people that are on the screen, only a few of us, um, can I see everybody's face? Yeah, they can, what they can do, they can just request to, to, to join on the on the screen there. Just just hover okay. over. It's like a little icon on the bottom there. And what I'll do is I and I'll bring them up. I can bring right, them up. You'll bring them up. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, now, Andrew, yeah. make sure you've combed your hair. Don't come up in here with your hair not combed. I'm just yeah. saying. That. I'm just saying. Now, Chad, you can kind of screen them out first. If the hair's not combed, just Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You had me worried, girl. You had me worried. I was worried. I was worried. All right, now no telling what Nicole gonna look like, but let's just go on and give it a shot. Now, Chad, you can screen them for me if they if they need to be. Yes, you know, sir. I, I I'll try my best. My wife said there's a way you can blur the 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 image. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, guys, for joining us. Um, this moment, I wanted to give some time to just kind of answer some questions, okay? So um, if you've got any questions or any concerns or anything that I've said that you want to revisit, I'd love to spend some time talking to you about that. Uh, Dr. Barnett, I have, a, I have a question that I would love to hear you um, kind of um, talk about. So when it talks about faith formation in your family, can you talk about the importance of a father because I know many families, especially um, in our community, some of our, our, our families are fatherless. Um, right. I'm a single mom. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk about the importance of those families that do have fathers, the importance of male, male role models when it comes to faith? I read a article that said when the father leads the family to church, there is a higher percentage of the family sure. going to church and knowing the Lord than the mother. So I just would love to hear your perspective Absolutely. on that. Well, it's true. Um, the illustration I always tell people this is that if a mom gets saved, she'll go home and get saved. And she's all excited and stuff. And then she'll get up the next day and she'll go to church and she'll go to church and she'll go to church. When dad gets saved, Everybody goes to church and the dog, you know, because dad says, no, everybody, we're getting out, everybody's getting out of here. That's just what, that's just what dads do. Um, it, it is important to have um, fathers in the home. But I will say, and I always say to single parents and, and others who don't, um, don't beat yourself up if he's not there. Okay. That's the first thing. Give yourself grace. 
But then what we try to do is we try to find other males who could step in and help play that role. Now, one of the things I say to my brothers all the time is that you don't have to take them the whole way. It's not my responsibility to put you on my shoulder and carry you all the way down the road. But what I've always prayed for, even with my children, is that the goal was to get them from here to the end of the road. What I pray for all the time is that God put people in their lives that if they decide to go off the road, they just kind of push them back on. That's all. Just push them back on. And that's what we encourage. Um, so we definitely do need men. We strongly need men in the family. Um, and that's just the way God designed it. Okay. Somebody else? Anybody else want to ask about that? Okay. Nicole says her late husband was the priest of our household. And even my young children understand the power of prayer and that they move of the Holy Spirit. Sure they do. Yeah. That's a good question. Excellent question. Why do you think it's why do you think there's a low number of men men or males serving in the areas of children and youth ministry? Wow. I don't know. Why do you think it? Now I told you. You push me on the board. <laughs> Don't be trying to go try to push me because I'm the speaker. Don't be trying to push me around. Hey, I, I, I my well, part. You, you tell me why. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe some, maybe because we've always viewed uh, Sunday school and working with kids as a woman's job, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so we don't see as many men operating or, um, you know, choosing to get into those areas of ministry in our church. But I would love to see more men because I think if we had more men serving in those areas, then sure. we could really make an impact um, when it comes to the boys that we, we serve in our ministries and churches. Absolutely. Well, and, and think about it. For example, most of us as men don't see elementary school men in the classroom. You know, you don't see them. You don't see them until maybe middle or high school, you know, but it's really important that they are in our lives. Um, I think, too, that the, our society has always pushed us as you're the man, you know, man, you do man stuff. You know, you go out and do men stuff. Um, so I think that's a challenge. Good question. Anybody on, anybody on the line want to ask to that? Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually in, enjoying this presentation, um, um, too. And um, this, this, you know, kind of reiterate what you're saying. I, I do think I, I blame a lot on society, as well. This, even if you know, with me, you know, I'm, you know, I'm 30, 39, about to be, you know, 40 next year, and I can literally count on one hand just how many male teachers I had. Mm -hmm. In elementary and high school, you know, growing up, and I, I do think society teaches us that, you know, especially even the black black male teachers. I mean, not just you know, you first you got male teachers, but now just having black male teachers that, sure. um, you know, what what we can and cannot do, and I, I do think times are changing. I do think it's it's generational, and I do think times are changing to where you are seeing more more men and, and more black men, especially just you know, demonstrating and, and being more, and you know, involved with their, with their family um, um, there. And I, and I try to be conscious of that. I'm a new father myself. I, I have, I have a two year old, uh, actually two, I'm um, two and a half year old daughter. And then I have a, a son who's uh, one and a half. I'm um, there. And, and, you know, just, just this morning, my, my, my daughter, she, she, she jumped into me and my wife's bed. Cause she always does that. Cause we're still trying to break her of that. But, mm -hmm. but, um, but she leaned over and, and, and she kissed me on the cheek. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's like how you were saying about sharing that faith. I, I try to show around our kids, you know, loving on my wife. Mm -hmm. and we have a partnership, this, this hugging her, hugging my, to try to hug my daughter constantly you know right. every day just to be that important man you know in her family like she can come to me first mm -hmm. before she can try to go um outside of our house or for, for anything and just having that comfortability uh, with me so having that male role is is important but i, I just don't know that and i guess that's the question i want to ask you is you know as far as little little kids like how do you demonstrate that that faith and just trying to keep on you know sowing those seeds of excellence, even at, you know, two and a half and, and one and a half years old. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. 
Well, they, you, you, you modeled it. You just said it. Um, I kiss my wife. I hug my daughter. Um, I'm there for them. You know, that you modeled it. That's that's that demonstrates what God is like to them. So they know when I call, hey, daddy, guess what you do? You run it. You go in there, especially yes, for sir. a girl. Yeah. And if she lays on your chest, whatever she wants, she's getting. That's just the full of that. I'm telling you that now. That's a rule. I've got one that's 23 years old. She okay. came to me one day. She laid on my chest and said, daddy, I need a computer. Guess what I did? Yeah. The same day, the same day, my boy said, Dad, you know, there's no computer. You know, I said, Walter, she laid on my chest. You don't yeah. understand. I mean, I'm, look at Angie. See, Angie's just laughing. That's why I don't like Angie. Okay. Because she knows that's the truth. Am I right, Angie? Look at her. Listen, my daddy bought me a whole car. See? So <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 40, and he surprised me with a red bow on an yeah. SUV. There you go. There you go. It's done. You're done. You're done. You know, but but it's so important though that that you know my daddy's there for me. You know, my parents are there for me. So, you know, the old school was like, for example, when you had small kids, you know, you're spoiling them, let them cry. They're supposed to cry. No, no, that cry means I need something. And as as their dad or their mom, you're gonna provide it. I'm gonna see about what you need. That's all. You know, it's a good question. Great question. Um, you keep modeling it. You keep modeling it. Um, and I always tell people this. Here's what I always tell them. I tell this to Jermaine all the time. I say, it's God, family, and church. It's in that order. Watch. God, remember, I started with the scripture and I said, love him with all your heart. It's God. Then it's family. And then it's the church. And don't ever get those mixed up. Don't ever get those out of that order. Your relationship with God is the most important thing. Your family is second, then the church is last. Okay? Church, community, whatever else you're called to do. Good question. All right. I can't read all the notes in the thing. So, Nicole, what are you saying? For those of us in ministry, we don't want the lack of balance to cause our kids to have an ill toward God. Absolutely. Unfortunately, in our church, I know too many pastors who have kids who don't like them and don't like the church. You know, they just don't like the church. One, one writer says something like, hey, dad, can you trade? Can you be nice at home and mean at the church? You know, um, you can't let this church thing ruin your relationship with your children. One of the things that I did growing up was when my kids were small, um, they played soccer. And I would go to district meetings, conferences, and I'd go to those meetings with those kids dressed in soccer clothes in their uniform. Because I was saying, I don't know what y'all doing, but at one o'clock, this boy got a game. I know where I'm going to be, you know. And some people are like, oh. They were like, you can't, but the bishop, but the elder wants you, oh. And you went there for roll call, oh. Man, please, Okay. They're only they're only eight once. They're only twelve once. They're only forty once. Man, that is so true. That's that's true. That is good right there. Enjoy them where they are. Love them, man. Because you you're it. See, and and you know when I asked you the question about what are some things that um that you don't want to answer, some questions you don't want your kids to answer, you know, have to deal with, have to talk with. Man, my my greatest challenge is. God, I don't want to be a failure to them. You know, I don't want to go to workshops and preach and do all this stuff and then be a hypocrite. Oh, man. So you got to model it. You got to model it and you do it every day. So it's, it's hard work. It's hard work, but you do it every day. You do it every day. And you got to give you opportunities and they'll, they'll see the light, man. They'll see them. Oh, yeah. I want to be like my dad because I know my dad has faith. How you know dad has faith? Because I've watched him, you know, and they they watch us. They watch us do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Jermaine is saying something. Someone once reminded me that God created the family before he created the church. Good word, sir. Thank you very much. Nicole, it says, and be, be sure to model the balance of family and church. Children learn from our behaviors yeah. and will call out these things. They sure will. 
They will. They'll call you out in a minute. <laughs> call you out. But my way, that's not how we treat people, is it? What would Jesus say? I would say, scratch your face. He would say, leave me alone. <laughs> okay. Um, other questions? Anybody got any questions? Looking in the chat. Um, let me think. Um, again, I, I want to remind you, trust what you put in them. Um, and if you make a mistake, apologize and just go on. Wake up the next morning and say, okay, God, I'm trying to do it again. But it's amazing. Each one is different. And they're going to mold. And see, you got to understand, God didn't accidentally give you the wrong child. Sometimes we think he did, but he didn't. He gave you one. Probably the sad part is he gave you the one that's just like you. <laughs> and, that's the, you know, and that's the one that bothers you the most because you see you in him so much. you know. And they all have different gifts. Totally and they different. all are different. God totally made them different. Created. Yeah. And what, what's so fun is because, you know, my kids are 23, 27, and 30. So, and watching them um, fall into the way God has for them. That's, I, I think, I mean, that's that's the cream of the crop. You know, I don't need another shirt, another pair of underwear, nothing like that. <laughs> Just watching them, watching them fall in line with what God wants them to do. Mm. You know, but you got to model it. You got to model it. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, Jermaine wants me to mention what I do at DC Virgo and why I think that is so important to do it. Um, one of the things I do at the school near the church, um, I meet every morning and I open the door for the kids who get out of the car. The car riders I open the door and I greet them. Good morning, glad you're here. You're know, welcome to Winter Wonderland. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever comes to my brain, I'll say it. And what I found is that the kids will literally sit in their car and wait for me to get to their door and open it, even though there'll be five cars in line and stuff. I'm doing this one way up here. They'll sit and wait. I mean, big kids, they'll sit and wait. Okay. And what I find is that the two things number one, first of all, Whenever you want to do something for kids, you got to be consistent. If you say, I'm going to show up on Tuesdays, you show up on Tuesdays. That's all. Because even though they may not say anything to you, just your presence means a lot to them. That's stability. Okay? Because they don't need another disappointment. Okay? And then the second thing I do is this. Remember I talked about when I help with my kids, just get them down the road. I'm not teaching them algebra. I'm not teaching them math. I'm not teaching them physical education. Even I'm a physical education major and all that. I'm not teaching them a class. All I'm doing is getting them out of the car to the classroom. That's all. That's my job. Out of the car to the classroom. And a lot of times they come out of the car and they had bumped heads with mom or dad or they're angry about something. And my goal is to get them from that car to the classroom in a decent state of mind. That's all I do. God didn't call me to teach them to carry their book. You know, that's all I do. I put the book bags on their back. We'll bend down and tie their shoes, whatever the case might be, because we got elementary all the way up to eighth grade. But that's just one of the things that I do. Thanks, Jermaine, for reminding us of that. So any opportunity you get to volunteer, any opportunity you get to pour into kids, you know, learn their names. Talk to them. Ask them stuff like, hey, man, like, watch this. Here's the thing, especially with middle, elementary and middle school kids. Catch them doing something. Say, man, I like the way you did so-and-so. I like the way, man, I like the way you tied your shoe. Guess what? Every time they tie their shoe, they'll come up to me. Look, 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 look. I did this right here. I did this bowl. This is what I did myself. You know, I did this one. And you brag about it. You brag about it. Because that's what they need. Okay? And that's how you strengthen families. Okay, and that's how you promote um, Christianity because they'll say, "Oh, I want to be like that guy." You know, I never tell them I'm a preacher. I never say, "Oh, you know, I'm Reverend Doctor." <clears throat> yeah, I'm pastor right up here. <laughs> no, I'm just the guy that opens the door for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good statement. Any questions? All the as a senior, I listen attentively as an observer. <laughs> This is a session I'm going to share with the young adult parents at my church. Thank you, sir. You are very welcome. Um, please do share. Um, I want to share a resource that I, I got just yesterday. 
and I want you to look at it. Um, it's a book entitled um, The Truth About Sex, Real Stories from Teen Guys Like You. It's written by a girl a lady named Jackie Bruton. Okay. Jackie Bruton is a friend of mine. She lives in um, Atlanta. She actually did a presentation at one of the midwinter meetings one time before. She wrote a book about girls, talking to girls about what girls think about sex. And these are all letters from boys, teenage boys who talk about sex. It's really, I mean, it's 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 phenomenal. So I'll check you, actually look at that, get an opportunity to pull it up. Um, it's a great resource. Um, things that you learn, you share. Things that you find, you pass on. Okay. Um, any other questions you've got? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Um, I guess in wrapping up, I would tell you, um, allow yourself a lot of grace. Okay. Being a parent is, is a phenomenal job. It's a tough job. It's a 24 seven job. Um, give your time, give yourself time to, um, reboot, to regroom, talk to some people that, you know, you know, don't, don't hold it all in. Don't keep it into yourself. You know, find somebody you can confide in, find somebody you can talk to, um, that will help you because God's going to put people in your life that will help you to get your children where he wants them to be. And you're doing a great job. So keep it up. Okay. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right. Anybody got any questions for me? Any thoughts? Any comments? All right. Let's see. see my, I'm, Chad, you see anything in the um, chat that I need to share or talk about? Um, let me check. Absolutely. One second. Okay. Cool. While you while you're doing that, would you take a moment, those of you who are still on the line, write down like say one or two things you want to remember from this workshop. Just put it in the chat. Just write down um, someone asked if you put the book. You can put the book okay. in the chat, the name of the book. Okay. Or yep, yeah, yes, sir. All right. It's called The Truth. I will gladly yeah. do that. Um Is the Life Labs for you? Okay, so I don't see a closing under the group right now. Um, let me double check this. Um, in... Oh, yeah, it's in our schedule, and then it's not right now. Yeah. You're welcome. It'll start five minutes before. Bye. All right. All right. That's the name of the book. The Truth About Sex. Mm -hmm. All right, give me a little bit. There you go. So what about people asking for the Almost body? done. Almost done. I don't know about that. That's not even we're not even encouraging them to do that. All right. The truth about sex, real stories from teen guys like you. And the author's name is Jackie Bruton. Okay. Now, the truth about sex. Real stories from teen guys about teen guys like you. And it's written, she speaks to over 10,000 kids a year. And these books, this book is about letters that teen boys wrote her about um, things that they, they've learned as it relates to sex. It is an excellent book, I'm telling you. That's, I promise you, it's an excellent book. Okay? I want to share that. All right. Um, I thank you guys so much for being a part of our session. I think our time is um, up. Anybody got any other questions or concerns? If Chad will show that last slide, it will give you my um, contact information. And if there's anything I can do to help you, don't call me. Call Jermaine Armour. Yeah, don't, don't call me. Call somebody else. But feel free if I can help talk or just chat with some things. Um, sometimes um, I've, I've been called to talk to parents, talk to kids, you know, talk to teenage boys or whatever the case might be. I'd be glad to do that. Chad, do you have that last slide? I think it shows my um, contact information. Boom. There you are. 
That's uh, my email is a one temple, a m e z at gmail dot com. Yeah. Feel free to uh, to reach out to me if anything I can do to help you. I'd be honored to do that. Okay. All right. Let's close in prayer. Yeah. Father, thank you for the children and the people that you've allowed to be a part of our family. Um, we didn't pick them, and I'm sure God would probably, if they had their options, they may not have picked us, but you've designed it the way it is. So I pray, God, that you'll give us strength and wisdom to do what it is you've called or assigned us to do. May we be faithful in practicing our faith at home, not just at church, but at home. Protect us and keep us until we meet again. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I appreciate you much. All right.